It gives Mindre India immense pleasure to host you all today for a very important aspect in a clinical laboratory. I, Kshama Nandode, Marketing Manager at Mindre India, on behalf of Mindre and all my colleagues, welcome you all for today's first session of Mindre Chemistry Academy. Mindre understands the importance of quality control in a clinical laboratory and hence has started an initiative to educate laboratory staff on various aspects of quality through its novel Mindre Chemistry Academy. This initiative was taken by our headquarters and Mr. Anil Makija, the product manager for chemistry. So to commence today, we have invited a very well-known faculty, Dr. Pooja Devi, Assistant Professor Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Medical College. She has done her internal auditor course for NABL 15189-2007 and ISO 15189-2012. She has an immense experience in maintaining quality management in a laboratory. And she is also a consultant for NABL accreditation. So over to you, Dr. Pooja. Thank you. Very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, myself, Dr. Pooja, I'm assistant professor in biochemistry department in the Baba Sahib Ambedkar Medical College. And thank you, Mindre, for this opportunity. And here I'm uh, present you for the maintaining of the quality, internal quality control. Uh, it is a very important part in the uh, medical diagnostics. Madam, is there any problem? No, no, it's I'm starting. Yeah, my objectives, today's objective at the end of the uh, presentation, participants should understand the basic principles of quality control and understand the importance for internal quality control schemes. So let us see what is quality control. Uh, quality control in the medical laboratory it is a process used to monitor and evaluate an article uh, process produces patient result. It is referred to the measurement adjustment that must uh, maintain the uh, during each assay and run to verify the test is working properly or not. Quality means, what is quality? During the, doing the right thing at the right time and the every time. This is the logo. This is the mission of the quality. It is a fitness for use during a uh, a word which is free from the deficiency and meet the customer need. It is invisible when good, it is impossible to ignore when bad. And these are the different dimensions of the quality like appropriate, timeliness, availability, competency, continuity, effectiveness, efficacy, efficiency, prevention, uh, care, and safety. Quality. Uh, the most important point in the quality control comes the quality insurance. It is the overall program that ensures the final report by the laboratory are correct and concerned with much more that the right test carried down on the right specimen and the right result and the right interpretation is delivered to the right person at the right time. So we are using every time right means we are uh, quality insurance will be very precise and accurate. And quality assessment is a proficiency uh, testing. Uh, it is a challenge to the quality insurance and quality control program that uh, determine the quality uh, of the laboratory result generated by the laboratory. So uh, I'm just talking about what is, uh, you should know about what is the mean of quality insurance. It is defined as the overall program that ensures the final result reported by the laboratory are correct. It means quality enhancement, it aims ensuring that the, uh, the data provided by the laboratory are relevant and quality insurance all uh, involves all measures that can be taken uh, for the laboratory efficiency and eff effectiveness, ensure the laboratory performance with minimum risk for laboratory workers gives maximum benefit to the individual and community. For this, we have to take care about many parts. It starts from the pre-analytical and goes up to the post-analytical. We have to take care every part of the laboratory. 
the quality insurance cycle can be like that it starts from the when you are uh, when our relationship start from the doctor to the patient it start from the requisition we are uh, requisition from pre analytical part patient client preparation sample collection patient competency patient receipt and assessing transport these are the pre analytical variable which will play a very important role to maintain the internal quality control 75% are the error occurs due to this pre analytical variable so we have to give more emphasizes to the pre analytical to maintain the internal quality control of course external quality post post analytical is also play a very important role in which record keeping interpretations and uh, tat is also very important so these are the why we need a uh, need of quality control in clinical laboratory uh, to support provision of high quality healthcare reduce morbidity reduce mortality reduce economic loss ensure credibility of lab generate confidence in lab result so quality means commitment confidence and responsibility overall things combined together it comes in the quality control of laboratory and we are the, by using these three words commitment and confidence we reduce all this morbidity mortality economic loss of the laboratory and what are the consequence of poor quality it will not maintain all these things it uh, result in inappropriate action over investigation over treatment mistreatment inappropriate inaction lack of investigation no treatment delayed action loss of credibility of laboratory and legal action so we have to take care about all these things to maintain the for this process we have to maintain a good quality control in the lab what are the various variables affect the quality result first thing is the educational background and training of the laboratory person as i said training and competency evaluation continuous rigorous training is very important for the laboratory person to train in every aspects of pre analytical to post analytical part and the condition of specimen who is collecting the specimen it should not be mismatched uh, it should be uh, collected in a proper container it should be transported in a proper way uh, and uh, the analytical part come the machine should be maintained in the proper way uh, calibrated in a right time controls are used to test the run reagents are not expire equipments are properly calibrated and then post analytical part that is interpretation of the result transcription of the results and reporting of the results so if we maintain all these variables i think we are able to achieve the quality insurance part and what are the factors factors affect internal quality control these are the outside laboratory factors which contribute about 75% of the part and 75% of the error occur due to this this starts from the requisition any mismatch in the requisition result in the failure of the some test patient preparation how we are preparing the patient that is also very important we have to frequently train our technicians frequently train our laboratories to prepare the patient how to collect the sample for blood glucose how to collect the sample for lipid profile for oclate well what are the um, things are required what is the order of draw how to collect in the right vacuum tuner right volume uh, these things are very important and sampling sample handling of course sample handling is also important part how we are storing the sample if you are transporting outside in a proper ice box proper maintaining the temperature no leaking is required so these things play a very very important role to control the uh, analytical part and once it received in the laboratory samples are properly centrifuge diverted toward the each sections and next the analytical part come analytical part the machine to be maintained and we have to give proper emphasizes to the maintenance of the machine proper calibration of the machine uh, running of the controls and then post analytical part so these are the factors which influences internal quality control and which outside laboratory play a very important role i just giving emphasizes to the uh, technical person ki vigorous training is required in this area to overcome the analytical part the analytical part as i said insufficient patient identification specimen identification and labeling is important patient preparation is important specimen collection storage and transportation specimen quantity we have to collect in adequate quantity not in a lab if suppose required 2 ml then 2 ml is the only if you collect for 4 ml it will be uh, review of sample is always very important mismatch of the sample so we have to give emphasis to the pre this pre analytical part 
and in analytical part internal quality control play a very important role it is used on the daily basis to accept or uh, reject the results of patient and samples enable the lab to decision and monitor the quality of uh, working in the lab external quality insurance it is a it permits a comparison of quality between the laboratory it is used to confirm the results of iqc for confirming the iqc whether our iqc is run in the best way we will go for the external quality insurance so this part is an analytical part if this part will come correct then our post analytical errors will be reduced post analytical part comes right reporting right patient right interpretation right turnaround time so this is also a very important part ki we have to report in a right way for the right patient there should not be any misinterpretation there should not be any mistranscription and in a right turnaround time in a timely manner we have to report and we have to find out the critical alerts in a rightly manner if urgent sample are there we have to report in a right manner these are the post analytical variables we have to take take care about this internal quality control procedures does the does the internal quality control procedures done during daily routine work to provide an immediate control errors are correct immediately routine collect and analyze the data every test run and procedure and for this doing this we need why do we need internal quality control to ensure that our test results are reliable to ensure that our test results are reproducible and control of daily routine work for this we need internal quality control there are various measures to control the internal quality control accuracy and precision accuracy correctness and consistency these two things are very very important to maintain the internal quality control which is measured by stat various statistical evaluation how close a measurement is to accepted value that is mean accuracy and how close a series of measurement measurements are each other that is precision so quality control is used to monitor both accuracy and precision of the assay in order to provide reliable results that is a good accuracy so accuracy and precision are more both are uh, important to maintain the quality control if we will not maintain the accuracy and precision what type of errors comes uh, input data required such as standard calibration various physical constraint we wish we should use proper standard proper control proper calibration uh, put the calibration values in a rightly manner in the equipment calibrators are not expiry standards are not expiry give emphasizes to that inherent characteristics of the quantity being measured suppose that if we are required 300 microliter it should be 300 it should not more than 350 to 400 so inherent quantity is also important accuracy and repeatability uh, of the instruments are important observer fallibility reducing errors blunders equipments selection analysis computation errors all this Uh, uh, if we, we fall on this, this errors comes and there is a failure in the internal quality control. Of course, external environment is also affecting the measurement, like temperature, pH, humidity. Theory assumes validity of the mathematics needs approximation. Like we have to, uh, we have, uh, we have by mathematic by means of using LJ chart, we will assume the mathematical approximation of the internal quality control. And there are different types of errors comes when. we are maintaining the internal quality control that is systematic error it is a avoidable error due to controller variables in a measurement timely calibration of the equipment timely use of the equipment um, control should be in a, uh, controls are not deteriorate calibrators are not deteriorate proper calibration of the equipment proper uh, probe cleaning of the instrument Uh, by using this we can eliminate the systematic error random errors are an unavoidable error present in every measurement like inadequate prepping and temperature humidity pressure so these are the random error we have to give emphasizes both uh, random as well as the systematic error to run the proper quality control in a lab how the systematic error and random errors are arise random error are in precision the causative factors for the random error are pipetting error temperature error mixing defect machine need troubleshooting 
systematic error in uh, inaccurate uh, inaccuracy due to deterioration of the control material deterioration of the uh, calibrator deterioration of the reagent all this caused with the systematic error internal quality control we use some specimen in the internal quality control that is called as a control and uh, levin genin chart are the statistical method for used for the interpretation of the internal quality control uh, what is control material that contain the substance being analyzed and it is used to validate the reliability of the test system it run after calibrating the instrument run periodically during testing so control play a very important role control and calibration play a very important role for the internal quality control system to check the patient results are in a correct manner uh, to obtain quality control material uh, we what is the method uh, to run the control either it should be run each day during the patient sample or run each control 20 times over 30 days and calculate the mean and sd so i am showing you how to calculate the mean and sd and cv values and how to interpret the lj chart that is the most important part of the internal quality control how to calculate the mean that is once we open the uh, once we open the control kit and there is a sheet comes in which it is written that this is the mean this is the range this is the sd so how this mean has comes it means comes from the sum of the data provided by the total number of the data point that is known as mean and what is sd this is the formula and what is sd it is a measure how much the data varies around the mean that is x upon x squared n by 1 and this is the formula of the sd and this is the coefficient of variation cv value which is most important day to day life and every month we will evaluate our sd value to ex express how accurate our test run is going on it is ex uh, cv is sd expresses proportion of the mean calculated by sd upon mean into 100 it is expressed in terms of percentage and standard deviation is very very important for a set of data with a normal distribution a value will fall within the range this thing is important plus minus 2 sd 95.9% of the value fall within this plus minus 1 sd 68.2% of the value fall within this and plus minus 3 sd 97% value how we will find out what is this plus 1 sd plus 2 sd plus 3 sd by means of plotting the lg chart we can find out this 1 sd 2 sd CSD. I will uh, tell you towards now. Uh, in general, laboratory the use of plus minus two SD criteria for the limit of acceptance range for the testing criteria. When the QZ measurement fall within this range, the ninety nine point ninety five point five percent confidence that the measure is correct. And Levin Genel chart is a graphical method to displaying controlled result and evaluating whether a process in control. or out of control it is plotted control versus time lines drawn from point to point except the trend on shift so this is the levin genuine chart how will uh, how we will plot this once we open the control kit as i said uh, we'll get a data sheet in which mean range and sd is written over there so mean is suppose that for a for a glucose estimation mean is 100 and uh, sd is written as 5 so how this sd comes that i'm going to tell about this we have to minus range suppose that range is coming from 85 to 115 this is the 3 as plus minus 3 as the range or we will find out the sd sd is the measured value as this is the distance between the between the mean and the one sd that is distance is the 5 how this 5 come it will it will uh, minus this 115 to 85 it comes 30 then divide by 6 because it is a 6 uh, this distance is 3 here and 3 here so one uh, one distance is cause about a 1 as it is about 5 so 6 uh, we are dividing uh, by 6 that we are uh, categorizing into 6 as it is Plus three SD here and three minus three SD here. So five is the SD. So we'll, in the quality control sheet, always we will see mean 
range and SD. So why, how we will find out which one is the first SD, which one is the second SD. So we have to add mean value to SD. If we suppose we are adding mean to uh, SD value, that is one SD five. So if one SD comes one zero five. If you want to add two SD, you want to create two SD, then we have to two times multiply it, add it, then it comes 110, three times 150. So by this way, we can plot the LJ chart. Same things we are, if we are minusing out, then, the, then that time we have to minus 100 minus 90, 100 minus five, which comes 95 is the one SD, then 10 minus it is minus two SD, then minus three, 85 is minus. So our range will be 85 to 115, the value mean is 100. Value must be fall, internal control, day-to-day day -to -day run, value must be fall between 85 to 150. If it is more than that, it is not acceptable. And that can be evaluated by means of LJ chart. By Ideally, should control value clustered about one uh, plus minus two SD with little variation in upward and downward direction. In precision, if the test is imprecise, the value scattered it showed there is an imprecision errors in the technique. Inaccuracy, there is a random shift and trend. It shows an in, in, inaccuracy. Random shift and trend comes when there is any deterioration in the control material, any deterioration in the calibrator, any malfunctioning of the equipment. In precision comes when there is a, a pre analytical variable uh, factors play in the role of precision, temperature, humidity, pH, all the things we have to get, take importance in that. And random error has no pattern to what technique malfunction in this tech, uh, frequent training and um, of the uh, person and competent of the person is required to uh, to eliminate the random error. By means of LG chart, we plot the control value each run and make the decision regarding the test is acceptable or not. And monitor over time to time to evaluate the precision and accuracy of the repeated measurement. So LJ chart is very, very important to evaluate precision and accuracy. And internal quality control is totally depend on the precision and accuracy. Review of chart at definite interval and take corrective action and document. This is the most important part of the NABL. The review of chart at definite interval and take the proper corrective action, take the preventive action at the appropriate time so that uh, test uh, patient results are not affected. Without accepting the control, we will not supposed to run the patient samples. And this LJ chart rules can be covered by Dr. J. James O. Westcott. That's why they're called as Westcott rules also. It uses a combination of decision criteria, control rules, allow determination whether an analytical rule is in control or out of control. There are certain rules governed by the Westcott which we use in the laboratory, that is 1-2-S rule, 1-3-S rule, 2-2-S rule, R-4-S rule, 1-4-S rule, and 10-X rule. In this, 1-3-S rule and 2-2-S rules are very, very important in the day-to-day -day run. I'm telling uh, now, and, and further, I'm going to tell which one is the random error and which one is the systematic error by finding out these two rules. Warning rule. One of the two control results fall outside to SD alert tech to possible problem, not cause for rejection and run, must evaluate three S run. Suppose the value comes like that, two SD. You are going towards three SD, you have to take care about that. It is an alert going towards the three SD. You can run the test, but taking care about all the pre analytical variables. Uh, temperature, humidity, pH, uh, a lot verification, reagent stability, uh, expiry of the control, everything should be monitored in this level. You can run the test in that. And one three S, if the two control value results fall outside of the three SD values violated, run must be rejected and, uh, and check for two two S. So this, I said that we have to accept between this our value should be internal control value should be come between minus 3 SD and plus 3 SD. If it is fall uh, afterwards, it is not accepted. It is a systematic error run should be repeated. We have to check all the pre analytical variable work. That is the fault occur. And we have to again recalibrate and rerun the control in this condition. Next, 
two two as told well, that is also very important two consecutive values for the uh, falls outside of the two sd in the same direction both control in the same run exceeds and patient error cannot be reported it is also a systematic error it require a corrective action in that stage this is the two two as told two values are falling on the same side we are uh, we are not supposed to accept the control we have to check all the pre analytical variable recalibrate and redone the control and then report if and once the control are acceptable then only we can report the patient we can run the patient test sample these rules are very very important to measure the quality control especially i said 22s rule and 13s rule in day to day laboratory process in day to day control limit we have to follow this 22s and what is 33sd and train our uh, technical persons to uh, analyze how to analyze this well, uh, lj charts and uh, what is r4x rule one control exceeds the mean by 2sd on the other control exceeds the mean Minus two SD and plus two SD. The range between two values will be uh, therefore exceed four SD. Random error has occurred and test must be rejected. So, like this way, we are running the two control level at a time, and values falling between the two SD on the either side, it is not acceptable. It is a rejection rule. Again, we have to find out what is the fault is there and uh, rule out from the pre-analytical variable to the analytical variable. Then take the corrective action and rerun the control. This is four one s rule, which is not very important. Required data from previous runs. Four consecutive QC result for one level of control are either side of the one SD. Both level of control have consecutively result that are outside the one SD. So it should be a, a little rejected run. Then next rule is important. Required control data from previous run consecutive and consecutive QC result for one level of control on. One side of the mean or both side of the control have all uh, five consecutive result that are on the same side of the mean like that. So it is uh, it is not acceptable. You know the LJ chart should be run like in a zigzag manner. It should not be fall on the same side either of the one SD, either of the this side or that side. It should be run in a zigzag manner. So that way uh, it should be run between the range of plus minus two at least. That is the best way to accept the. LJ chart and best best way to evaluate if our test is running properly or not. So Westcott rule and LJ chart is very very important whether to to find out the, our test is accurate, precise in nature. So this is very important tool or statistical analysis to control the internal control level. And once the rule is violated, what happens? Warning rule. Means to intercept other control point. Warning means you have to intercept. Uh, what are the uh, other errors can be able to happen? Like we have to give importance to the calibration controls, temperature monitoring, human humidity monitoring, pH monitoring. If the once the rejection is out of control, we are stop testing, identify and correct problem, repeat testing on patient sample and control. Do not report patient result until the problem is solved, and. Perform in uh, adequate proper performance. Solving out of if this out of control, then you have to solve the problem. You have to make the policies and procedure for remedial action. What is your remedial action if the control is outside? So you have to check from pre-analytical variable to the analytical variable. Where is the problem occurring? If it is a sample is adequate, sample is hemolyzed, sample is lipidemic. Either you are not centrifuged properly. Then, if it is centrifuged properly, the proper maintenance of the instrument done or not, daily maintenance properly falling or not, any any debris are coming in the probe while running the test, uh, uh, temperature and humidity of the uh, analytical place is proper, pH uh, TDS meter is calibrated or not, uh, uh, calibra calibration is an expiry, it should not be deteriorated. Controls are in, in a proper way. We have uh, we have finded out the right manner. Uh, we have put at the right value of the mean or SD in the instrument or not. That is also a very important part. We, once with the lot has been changed, reagent lot has been changed, control lot has been changed. We are whether we are checking the values or not. We are putting the right value in the instrument. So these are the troubleshooting criteria we have to follow when the control is out. An alternative to test rejection. 
so these things are very very important to control the internal quality control we have to find as i said in the previous like the pre analytical variables are very important to control the uh, in uh, internal quality control uh, suppose that sample is not received in a proper way how the internal quality control can be done so pre analytical variables play 75% of the part of course analytical variables are important maintenance of the instrument timely calibration of the instrument timely calibration of the minor equipment also if your auto pipette is not calibrated your result is not up to the mark if your centrifuge is not calibrated centrifugation calibration pipetting calibration incubator calibration uh, temperature hygrometer calibration all the things play a very very important role to control the pre analytical variables and further take control the internal quality control use of proper uh, control material it should not be expiry proper calibration uh, play a very important role in the troubleshooting and uh, any malfunction of the instrument in proper time we have to uh, uh, attempt properly maintenance of the instruments these are the variables we have to give importance to uh, overcome from the violated rules of the lg charts and why we use lg chart we use uh, vescar multi rule to help us uh, while maintaining high cost of certainty of our analytical process and function properly in other word diminish the false rejection rate without compromising quality so that's why vescar rules and lg charts are important what is the key message from this uh, program quality control program allows the laboratory to differentiate between normal variation and errors a quality program monitor accuracy and precision of the laboratory assay and result of the patient that should not be released if the qc result for the test and do not meet the laboratory target value for to meet the laboratory target value we have to emphasize this from the pre analytical and analytical part it starts from the patient collect, sample collection and receive from the laboratory as well as the, all the analytical process as i have discussed and then only we can meet up the laboratory target value quality is never an accident it is always the result of high intention sincere efforts by all intelligent and skillful direction execution it represent the wise choice of many uh, alternative thank you very much and now any questions regarding that hello thank you madam uh, there are some questions in the q and a section okay um there's a very interesting question from dr sankari shankari shanoy uh, she says for random lipid profile results should we give normal reference range especially for triglycerides uh, for uh, for normal lipid profile just repeat the question please for random lipid profile results should yes. we give normal reference range especially for triglycerides see there are different uh, yeah see there are different criteria to use the reference range some people are some laboratory person are using reference range which are giving in the kit and search some laboratory persons are using reference range by referring different uh, 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 this, uh, i evaluating by different books and all so there is a, a specific range has been given prior to whatever the range we will put in the machine that is a we are using as a biological reference and bri to evaluate any type of parameter either it is a triglyceride cholesterol hdl ldl whatever it is and we have to for the for checking the this one lipid the profile uh, sample uh, sample adequacy is also impo important there is another question ma'am how do we calculate cv from lj chart with yes. or without rejected values with or without rejected values see cv values comes uh, when you have to 30 days run See when the we will receive the control, it shows a manufactured mean. 
in the we will enter that manufactured mean in the machine and will run the control on a 30 points or 20 points and then afterwards a value comes that is called as a lab mean and we are using that mean to evaluate the cv because it is a highly precise and accurate value and that cv value can be used for further evaluation until the control lot not has been lot not has been changed and uh, you uh, next question you have asked whether with, accept the CV without accepting or rejecting the uh, uh, rejecting the run. Of course, if three S D or two 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 S rules are there, we have to reject and we have to take the corrective action immediately. Day to day, day to day basis of the evaluation evaluation of the LJ chart is very important to maintain the high accuracy, which is measured in terms of coefficient of variation. That is your CV value. If the test is Test run. Suppose that today I'm running a control of glucose and my value is 125 and my A3 SD is 115. So we should not accept 125. We have to take the proper corrective action first. What is the reason for uh, going outside? And then we have to recalibrate, rerun the control. That value can be accepted to find out your CV. So that uh, that process will be goes around like 20 days or 30 days and then your monthly CV will be achieved. Second question, ma'am, any question? There's another interesting question, ma'am. Yes. Um, if it's Dr. Gargi Mishra, she, uh, she's asking if we are following lab mean, is yes. it necessary to set our own SD? Or can we follow manufacturers as no, no, no. If you are uh, if you are running your lab main, then you have to set your lab SD because once you are uh, setting your lab main, the SD will always change. Manufacturer SD will be different and lab SD will be different. As as soon as your if your lab is if your machine is automation, it automatically equipment will set the SD level when you set the lab mean. Uh, after setting the lab mean, we use we use definitely we use the SD level which is showing in the machine after setting the lab. Mean. So there was a always interest. People always use manufactured mean. Manufactured mean will be allowed only to run the test for up to 30 days. Manufactured mean will be allowed only to test run up to 30 days. Once the lab mean has been generated, has been generated, then we'll fix the mean and fix the SD up to the lot not being changed. Once the lot reagent lot or control lot or calibrated lot, then again we will put the machine. That's why in a, we will prefer. Uh, in an NBL lab, we have to take a uh, longer expiry, longer expiry, a lot uh, longer expiry for the lot. Same lot can be run up to six months or one month. So by this way, we can achieve a very good CV level by maintaining the lab mean and lab SD. And especially LABL prefer we will run the LJ chart on lab mean and lab SD. For that purpose, we uh, we require the control should the lot number should be same uh, maximum level up to a maximum level. Until an urgent, it is not required to change the lot number. We prefer the vendor should um, uh, provide the same lot number so that we can achieve a certain level of uh, accuracy in, in our testing process. Any question? There's another question, interesting question by Mr. Navi Che. Yes. Uh, how to calculate bias percentage? By measuring the true value and the measured value. Uh, another question is from Mr. Suresh Babu. What to do when two levels QC pass, but third level is outlier for the same analyte? Okay, so we have to take a corrective action for the third panel. We have to uh, run two QC. Uh, suppose that uh, an ABL allows a maximum level of two QC should be run in a day if your lab is uh, receiving uh, more than 25 sample. If we are using a third QC also in hormonal assay, we must to take the action on that. Um, uh, suppose normal path and uh, low level QC is attacked. So we have to see what type of, uh, uh, if it is acceptable in the range of normal, uh, low level or normal level, um, at least we can, if a path level, if path control is outlier, we must take the corrective action. We must see what are the uh, checking points where the QC failed and then again rerun the sample, accept the test and accept the control and then only can run the patient sample. Any question? 
if any case there is a failure again come that time it's possible uh, run that day but you have to take a troubleshooting and plan the policy and procedure for this for the corrective actions okay uh, there is a question from mr mahesh venkateshan for glucose by values coming in range of 1 sd for 10 days is it accept Acceptable. No, it is not acceptable. Yeah, I yeah. said that is four x rule. If as as it is coming, as I discuss in my uh, uh, rules of the Westcar rules, if as it is coming consecutive five days in the uh, one fall within one rest, it is not acceptable. It is little and precise. You have to check the point where it is imprecise. Imprecise due to the inappropriate uh, pipetting, mixing, uh, auto pipetting is not correct while uh, or allocating while making the allocates of the Uh, uh, either proper storage of the allocates is there or not. So these are the, the little troubleshooting we have to give emphasizes on that. Then only we can find out our uh, corrective actions and preventive actions and rerun the control. It should be more not five consecutive value, but then one is it is not acceptable more than five days. There are some questions in the uh, chat box. Uh, and uh, i would like to like there are uh, some similar questions so uh, some people are asking what is the acceptable cv for each parameter see there is a difference in the acceptable cv for each parameter cv is always acceptable it is it is less than 5 um uh, and different parameters are different criteria suppose that we are running the alp alkaline phosphatase test then she will will be accepted up to 9 10 or 11 and if we are running a test for the glucose she will will be always acceptable less than 5 it should not um uh, the appropriate manner to accept the cv values it should be always less than 10 it should not not be more than 10 if it and more precise more accurate the cv values less than 5 Uh, there is a question from uh, Chinnu Yasudas. She is asking, "Are Westcard rules mandatory in clinical laboratory?" Yes, definitely. Our Westcard rules are mandatory in clinical laboratory, especially the labs who are going for annual accreditation. These Westcard rules must be seen and uh, uh, seen in terms of internal quality control. They see that how we are well, we are taking the corrective action, preventing action. How well we are documented, how well we are trained the technicians or technical staff in that. Okay. Uh, there is a very interesting question from Miss from Doctor Sajna Sir. Somebody is asking uh, Rakesh, Mister Rakesh, what is the stepwise uh, corrective action, preventive action to uh, to. I haven't read properly to accept the yeah. uh, stepwise action is uh, like that stepwise action to release the corrective action first stepwise action you have to check from the pediatric whether the sample is adequate sample should not be hemolyzed first thing is that okay sample is properly centrifuged is not it is properly received in a um, in a proper temperature second thing equipment maintenance comes uh, the in the in Infrastructure, the accommodation is very important. Play important role. The temperature, proper temperature maintenance, proper humidity, temperature maintenance, especially in biochemistry parameters like calcium and electrolyte. Iron is important. Um, pH is uh, TDS. Uh, TDS of water is very important role. And uh, these are the corrective risk and troubleshooting. Then comes to the instrument analytical part. Whether the instrument is daily maintenance properly, monthly maintenance, weekly maintenance, daily maintenance, timely calibration. And next reagent should be not expiry. The reagent we are using in adequate quantity. It uh, it is not expiry in nature. The controls calibrator which are using not deteriorable. It is an appropriate manner. It is appropriate quantity and. then the sub uh, competent person to run the control to run the calibration these are the checklist we have to identify to eliminate the random and the systematic and we have to document this checklist and we will always require we have to document and make a check like checklist of the random and systematic error make the checklist every time when the control is outright and you have to document whatever do you have to write and in your cells we are doing everything but we are we are not document the documentation process is very very important next question ma'am uh, there is a question uh, from mr um, mohammed mehtab alam 
Uh, he's asking, can you please explain on precision versus accuracy and also shift and trend meaning? Okay. Uh, accuracy means how close to the measurement. Accurate. Precise means consistent. So both are important. Accuracy means day to day run. Daily we are running the control. And precision means at a 20 times. Uh, uh, Simon Taylor said 20 times uh, we are running the control. Uh, Simon Taylor said 20 times we are running our uh, uh, patient result as uh, our uh, control value for 20 times. That is a precision. It is an inter-run. Inter-run is also called as. And what is a trend and shift? Automatic uh, precision comes and precision means uh, precision means uh, scattered values come in the LJ chart means your your uh, pipetting is and inadequate your other theoretical variables is and inadequate shift and trend come uh, brilliantly the LJ chart will go three SD and minus three SD like that so it shows trend and shift so your deterioration of the control material deterioration of the calibrator you have to see the maintenance of the equipment that time in equipment a malfunctioning of the equipment if there is any shift and trend come automatically any questions more yes two three questions more we will take ma'am because accuracy and precision as i said internal quality control is always depend on the accuracy and precision of the test controls always depend it is depend on the accuracy and uh, precision imprecise and inaccuracy is not acceptable at all and in terms of we can say imprecise means random and in inaccuracy means systematic error there are many questions ma'am but uh, we can take uh, two three questions more since we yes. have a time limit so uh, i will uh, yeah, there's a very important question. How to do calibrator lot verification? Okay, calibrator lot verification. We have to calibrate a lot verification. We have to do uh, by running the control samples also. Suppose that we are doing calibrator lot verification with the old lot and new, new lot. We have to do the controls, both positive and con negative control runs at a simultaneous time with old lot calibrator as well as the new lot calibrator. This will be written in the uh, 112, NABL 112, how to do the reagent uh, lot verification. I will emphasize this. Please go and read uh, NABL document 112. Uh, there is one more good question. What is the ideal temperature inside the lab? Uh, it should be less than 25. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if the QC result is extremely precise, the SD will be near to zero. Then how we need to follow LJ rules? The same 1 to S rule is applicable or not? Is a slightly a difficult one. Uh, can you please repeat it? If the QC result is extremely precise, the SD will be near to zero. Zero, yes. Then how to how we need to follow LJ rules? The same one to S rule is applicable here or not? Yeah, that time if your SD is so precise, I have one one to S rule is applicable. Okay. Okay, so uh, one more question is asking from Muhammad Ahmed. Lot verification patient sample is needed for verification. All if QC is fine, yes. If the QC is fine, lot verification. Uh, sometimes we'll do both both ways. We can do the lot verification with the help of patient sample also with the help of control. But nowadays, Manuel one world two says lot verification can be done using only the control material, not the patient sample. The rule has been changed now. Now the new one, new one one two says only a lot verification can be acceptable with the use of control value, control, not the patient's help. There's a question again. Can we establish lab mean for hematology parameters as QC expiry is very short? No, no, it is very difficult because it is a 15 days or one. Generally, in hematology, we use the manufactured mean. It is a lab mean is, is employed basically in the biochemistry section. If we are, it can apply in the hematology section if we are there using a long expiry of the control, which is impossible to get. Mm. 
Now I wanted to give emphasizes uh, to use the MINRE as third party control. MINRE use CRP as a one of new parameter. And um, NABL also prefers to use a third party control. And MINRE is providing in that uh, third party control using a new parameter of CRP, C reactive protein. And always uh, there is a very curiosible about the uh, many person in past before starting the MINRE India approaches me to tell about something about the NABL, how to start those labs who are NABL accreditation, how to start. Uh, let me talk about uh, five minutes for the NABL. It is a national board of calibration, uh, accredi uh, calibration academy, testing and calibration, which is on the uh, medical laboratory ISO 15189201 to give the accreditation towards the medical laboratory in which you are, uh, those labs who are interested to go for NABL, please, I will emphasize this, go and read NABL document, which is very, very important. NABL 112, in which you will find out what is the technical competency, what are the accommodation required, infrastructure required, calibration criteria, competency criteria. Every procedure will be described in the 112. 217 is a checklist of the ISO 15189, in which every check, it is a clause-wise checklist given from 4.0 to 4.10. 4.0 to 4.10 is prepare about the how to prepare for the management and quality insurer. Who is the medical director? What is the uh, competency of the medical director? Who is the quality manager? What is the who, uh, quality? Uh, there is a uh, requirement quality manager and the internal auditor course. Who is the technical competent person, technician? What are that? Is how to maintain the quality control, uh, how you are receiving the samples, whether you are doing vendor evaluation or not in a timely manner, whether you are doing uh, lot verification in a timely manner, finding out the corrective and preventive action or the how many, how much time you are retaining your sample reports, your TRF, retention time, what is the retention time of the lab, and what are the internal audit you have to carry out the internal audit, take out the preventive action. Risk management is also a very important part of that. You have to find out the risk and document it. Find out that it starts from NABL said it starts uh, the whatever I said, pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical. You are do, doing in the lab, but we are not documenting. And the says you have to document from the first, like pre analytical part, you have to document each and everything. Whatever we will do, we have to document that only the NBL says and quality assurance can be achieved. So 4.1 to 4.10 is the dealing with the management criteria in which duties of the lab management has been described, in which how to maintain the internal audit, how to do the management review meeting, how to achieve the risk risk of the lab, pre-analytical, analytical, post-analytical post risk, how to do the lot uh, calibration, vendor evaluation, review of the management. And first thing for doing the NABL lab should be registered either in a proprietorship, either in a company ship. Lab should be, uh, lab contain, uh, take the DPCC. DPC is like pollution control certificate is very important as it is anywhere in the, anywhere in the India. And third thing is required, um, agreement from the waste part. Those who are taking the waste part, the agreement is very important to take the agreement from the bio waste who is collecting the waste sample from lab. And MOU, memorandum of agreement when your uh, instrument fall out at uh, that time where you will send your samples. You send your samples to the NABL agreement, NABL accredited lab. So three, three four, uh, um, and uh, criteria is very, very important for the NABL document. First thing is the lab registration. Second thing is that the pollution control. Second, the third is the waste management. Fourth is the management of uh, the memorandum of agreement with the NABL accredited lab. Let's start preparing for the document, how to prepare for the quality control, quality manual, quality Procedure, you have to define your procedure, policy, and document in the quality pro quality system procedure. Maintain the sample collection, prepare the sample collection manual, prepare the SOPs according to the uh, ISO says, according to the ISO says, you have to prepare SOPs like then prepare the safety manual and uh, maintain the internal and external quality control chart. External co proficiency is also important to take part in the NABL. NABL requires lab must take part in the internal quality control as well as in the equas lab must calibrate the instrument in the timely manner. Minor and major equipment calibration is most important to take the NABL accreditation. 
and uh, preparation of the document in a proper manner so, and second thing last thing term competency of the technical staff you have to take the competence and the regular training rigorous training is required and uh, safety of the person you have to properly vaccinate in a proper time uh, vaccination is very very important uh, train the uh, technical person for the needle stick injury train the uh, technical person for the uh, spill management train the technical person for the biomedical waste um, how to uh, do uh, follow the biomedical waste rules and uh, in the post analytical right reporting is very important you have to interpret it no transcription error are there you have to document whenever there is any transcription critical alert find out the critical alert find out the critical alert in a timely manner document that send a timely uh, interlap comparison whenever your request is outlined or send the trend for the interlap comparison for three months or for six months that is also criteria um, your software should be uh, validated you have to take the validated software uh, prove the validation certificate of the software these are the criteria documentation required 4.0 to 4.10 deal with the management to prepare the quality man uh, uh, quality manual to uh, to emphasize is the duties of the everyone it is a technical manager who is that um, what is the duty of technical manager what is the duty of lab director with their organogram what is the duty of technician flag out is what is your organogram what is your chart timely uh, take the vendor evaluation review of the uh, inter lab comparison review of the uh, review of the referral lab is also one of the criteria when you are receiving the adis material whether you will review the material in, in section of the material proper temperature maintenance storage transport so these we are doing everything but we are not documenting when it says document 4.0 to 4.10 deal with the documentation of the management part 5.1 to 5.10 deal with the technical part 5.1 start with the technical technical competency technical competency technical competent rigorous training is required uh, any induction training whenever the person join in anavel accredited lab we have to give the induction training about the lab about the anavel documents and uh, uh, in personal also vaccination is also very important whether the person is vaccinated or not before joining or join after joining uh, against uh, uh, hepatitis again immunization now covid vaccination is also very important tetanus vaccination again has started a new thing in the anavel cme is the regular cme has been done then 5.2 uh, storage proper uh, biomedical waste how we are discarding the liquid waste how we are discarding the solid waste we have to document this 5.3 comes reagent verification acceptability whether we will accept the reagent in a rightly manner uh, we are giving the emphasizes to the uh, reagents but whatever the reagent are received we will do lot verification reagents are not expiry Uh, maintain the temperature and humidity. Then five point four says about the PRF. How uh, how we will maintain the how we are prepare the uh, test requisition form. Uh, in the preparing of the test requisition form, it is important we have to maintain write that uh, patient name in a correct manner. Patient name, age, sex, time of sample collection, time of sample collection, type of sample. Type of sample is important. It is EDTA, serum, or urine or stool, and type of test. all this should be included in the trf and sample collection manual in a proper way we have to maintain the sample collection manual how to prepare the sample collection when this is our test this is suppose that suppose uh, uh, i am doing a clinical biochemistry dealing with so this is serum in a serum we are doing the glucose test by which method we are doing by glucose or glucose oxidase method or by hexokinase method what is our tat Uh, two hours or three hours. Everything we have to maintain in the directory of services. Which test we are doing outsource? Which test we are doing outsource? All these things we have to document. Then five point five comes for the preparation of SOP according to ISO. We have to prepare the SOP. We are receiving a kit insert in our lab. Um, For the testing purpose, but we have to prepare our SOP according to the annual, in which we have to give what is the aim of the SOP, what is the principle, uh, what is the um, uh, coefficient of an uh, variation, measurement of uncertainty, linearity detection, specimen storage, transport procedure, interpretation, VRI, critical alert, reference interval. Everything should be included in a point-wise manner to prepare the SOP for biochemistry, for hematology, for clinical pathology. 
and five points after that quality insurance part comes whether we are running the quality control in a proper manner or not how much level of control we will run daily two level three level one level now nabl 112 says we have to run at least two level control per day if you are receiving lab is receiving either 0 to 25 if you are receiving sample more than 100 so three level controls or four level controls are whatever the controls we are running we have to document in a proper manner we have to document the lgtr review the lgtr in a proper manner the review the cv value finding out the corrective action and preventive action whatever i am telling we have to document according to the 5.6 then quality external quality assurance part we are sending sample for the external quality assurance timely we are evaluating the external quality assurance suppose that for the biochemistry we are sending sample for cmc value so we will identify vis and sdi if it's a vis is more than 200 is not acceptable what is the corrective action we are calling again rerunning the control rerunning the qua sample if sc is more than 2 we is not acceptable rerunning the aqua sample sending the aquas for ilc changing the reagent kit whatever the corrective action are required we have to document and i will say we are doing everything because we are not document documentation is a very important part next ilc if we are sending sample for the ilc it is from the nabl accredited lab or not what is the acceptable criteria for the ilc either we are accepting the clia guidelines or setting our own lab criteria then 5.8 says um, about the reporting uh, report the content of the uh, sample uh, report content will properly mention the name age sex time of sample type of reporting uh, type of the sample the test we are suppose we are doing a glucose test by which matter glucokinase hexokinase it should be mentioned in the test report what is your bri the biological reference interval suppose it is 100 to 400 it should be mentioned where it is referred by the kit insert or by some reference book it should be mentioned it should be documented in that uh, and whatever the parameters are and be all accredited or not it should be marked properly this is the way, way how we can maintain our uh, reporting um, sorry had a lead had letter had and all the software should be validated authenticated with the help of password and we will check or whether the software is validated or not and second thing is any critical alerts are coming in the lab result in a timely manner you are identifying it for critical manner or critical alert you have to document each and every suppose that this id 1 2 3 4 patient is suffering from uh, glucose samples from his report is 400 mg so immediately you have to identify report the clinician or document also the as i said documentation is very very important part so identify the critical alert identify the transcription error this is which is very common while typing typographical errors come suppose that we are reporting 100 mg sugar and we have reported 10.0 mg so pointing error is important so whatever the errors comes we have to document out and then last come for the interpretation of the results interpretation comes and advisory services technical a person should write a advice if person is reporting 400 mg we have to interpret it and advise for the hba1c if person is reporting total bilirubin very high then advise for further test in the lft advise for hepatitis immunization like that advisory services are very important part so we are doing everything uh, and we all say this is all this process is called as a quality system procedure so each and every point go through 217 i request go through the checklist of 217 each and every checklist you have to make the document each and every point of the clause you have to do, document out and things are very easily once we will document see that your quality will be improved day by day and continuous training of the staff continuous internal audit of the staff internal audit of the lab continuous taking the corrective action preventing action continuous training rigorous training is required in that by me why we are taking uh, why we are giving rigorous training because we can eliminate this pre article error and article error in the training is also a very important part in the 5.1 so these are the document process how we are discarding the lab waste that is also very very important now that how we are discarding liquid press with whether we are document how much hypochlorite is required to which 1% 4% how we are preparing what is the procedure for preparing the hypochlorite where we are documenting it it not how we are discarding the solid waste 
so suppose we are discarding the uh, solid waste in which manner and red bag which type of waste goes in yellow bag which type of waste goes in blue bag which type of sharp container so we have to train the uh, staff technical staff regarding this and waste and the second thing is the autoclaving is very very important after the testing vacutainers especially the microbial samples are must should be autoclaved and sent to the uh, third party agency for the further uh, wastage so autoclave must be calibrated timely we are using chemical indicator and biological indicators and in we have to document this everything should be documented uh, autoclave logbook maintenance logbook sending of the solid waste to the third party agency finding a uh, liquid waste discard and we have to document what and i will said whatever you do you have to write so i call go and read 217 according to the clauses uh, we have to make the document documented in a properly manner find out the corrective action and preventive action and i hope then only we will able to get the uh accreditation in the iso 15189 thank you so much any questions required there? i hope i am able to meet at guidance how to the lab will be go and second thing those were small laboratories one more accreditation is come that is a medical entry level accreditation in which lab only required to participate in the internal control as well as the external control Uh, proficiency testing and instrument should be calibrated no need of preparing documentation and all and lab should maintain all the legal document like i said that uh, said that keep uh, com uh, company ship proprietorship pollution control board mou if these documents are required and lab is participating in the internal control and external control and timely calibrating the major and minor requirement uh, the small lab will get the accreditation for medical entry level and after 3 years lab will get prepared itself for the full accreditation thank you so much for hearing me so patiently any questions thank you madam it was a very elaborative talk to... Yeah. Yes, yes. It was indeed a very elaborate. You said that can be people about... asking for NABL, so I just elaborated. Yes, it. yes. Uh, I was going to ask you about the basic lab composite, and you covered that also. Yeah. So really, uh, very thankful. Uh, on behalf of Mindray, I thank you for uh, such a informative uh, talk on internal quality control, and I hope everybody uh, will. Uh, implement whatever you have uh, spoken on in their day to day practices so thank you madam very much thank you so much thank you thank you mindre for uh, giving such opportunity